my name is Dave Krogh and I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of Sailing 24-7. We're based in Ames, Iowa. We're uh, developing small-scale, lightweight farm equipment and it's autonomous farm equipment. Um, right now it's electric powered autonomous farm equipment and what we're trying to do is address soil compaction. We, we, we want to uh, help contribute to soil health in general, but our focus right now is on reducing soil compaction. And we have our uh, our prototype here, so it's a prototype uh, planter, four row planter, four rows, 30 inch row planter. Again, electric and autonomous, GPS navigation. Uh, we have a 10 kilowatt hour battery on this prototype. So with continuous planting, it would last about an hour and a half. And it depends on soil conditions. Um, under soil compaction conditions, it probably le uh, lasts less than an hour and a half. But um, So we started out with a battery swapping approach. So when the battery got low, we would swap for a fully charged battery. We actually, right now have a hybrid version here so we we have a generator on here that keeps the battery charged and so it'll go 12 hours before we have to put fuel in the generator so we don't have to swap batteries right now ultimately we we may go back to the battery swapping approach but uh, it's a little bit easier now with the generator on the machine so this is a prototype so it's not ideal it is gas powered generator we would prefer not to use gas powered. Um, so our plan is actually to charge the batteries either at the end of the field or on the machine with diesel, uh, with a diesel generator. And we would like to run that with uh, B1, what's called B100, which is 100% biodiesel. So more sustainable, renewable energy and get, get rid of the gas generator ultimately. So we were on uh, seven farms this, this spring and summer. Uh, the first field was more of a conventionally tilled field. The other six fields were no-till fields. We planted, we just planted soybeans this year. Uh, in terms of how it went, it actually went really well planting into no-till. We had all kinds of conditions, high residue, low residue, beans after corn, beans after beans. So a lot of different conditions. Um, it went really well. We did have, so we, we kind of pride ourselves as being lightweight. The problem is we were probably a little too lightweight in some cases. So we actually had to add weight to the, uh, the planter to keep it in the ground in some of the no-till fields that we did, which wasn't a problem. Uh, we, we have a way to add um, tractor weights, suitcase weights to the to add a little bit of weight. So it went well. We did have a few issues, challenges. Got good, good feedback from the farmers we worked with. The seven farmers we worked with were great to work with. They helped us out a lot. Uh, got a lot of good feedback on a couple of fields. We had others come in and so groups come in and, and observe and um, for the most part farmers are intrigued by what we're doing and interested. They're interested in the technology. You know, I think farmers in a lot of cases would like to see their neighbors use it before they <laughs> maybe use it. but. Uh, but again, our, our focus is really to get big, heavy equipment off the field and replace it with smaller, lighter weight equipment. So we're starting out with a farming as a service model, basically a custom farming model. We would do the planting, the spraying, the side dressing, whatever operation we're doing, and it would be a custom sort of thing. And the reason we're doing that is because we're still learning uh, as well about how to the best way to use this equipment and there's still some issues we we have to figure out we do not have our docking station in place yet so so probably for the next two to three years we will stay with a farm as a, as a service model we won't sell the equipment to the farmer at some point though we do want to sell the equipment to the farmer um, so they would own the equipment, but there's probably still going to be a service um, component to that in terms of 
whether we help monitor the machines in the field or help with data and data management sorts of things. But uh, for the next two to three years, we'll be, uh, we'll be operating these things in farmer fields. So this year we were on seven farms and it was more of a test mode. We actually, for next year, for 2023, we would like to talk to farmers that are interested in trying this out on their farm, whether it's planting, spraying, side dressing. Um, we're actually working with the Iowa Soybean Association on doing on-farm trials next year. So if there's farmers, in particular Iowa farmers, that are interested in participating in that program, we'd sure like to talk to them. We're still putting that program together in terms of what we want to evaluate, but we'll probably evaluate things like row width, uh, population, planting date, planting speed, um, and we have some other ideas, but we're still kind of defining that program. But if there's farmers that are interested in participating, we'd sure like to talk to them. So we, we've designed and built this in a modular way. So there's really, this prototype, there's two basic components. There's what we call the drive unit, which is the chassis, it has the power. And then in this case is a planter. So we can, we can take the planter off and then we can put on a boom and a, a tank, and then we have a liquid spray system, or, or we could do side dressing with liquid nitrogen. Um, and we're looking at some other things as well. We'd like to seed cover crops at some point with it as well, but, but the, the drive unit would be used across all of the different field operations. And uh, it's, a lot of the components of the drive unit are expensive in terms of motors and computers and GPS. So we'd like to leverage that across several different field operations. Um, so that's why it was designed in a modular way. It, the farmer would operate it basically the same across different field operations. Now, obviously when you're planting, it's a different approach than when you're say post-emerge spraying. Um, when, you're, when you're doing post-emerge things like spraying or side dressing, you have a growing crop in the field and so you approach the navigation a little bit different than if you were planting. So when we're planting, we actually lay out the field in terms of all the navigation lines before we get started with planting and we just go plant. With post-emerge things, we, we have to know where the rows are at. Um, so if we've planted the field, it's no problem. We know where the rows are at. If a farmer is planted with RTK GPS, we can use that data as well. But if, if they haven't done those two things, if we haven't planted or if they didn't plant with RTK, we have to approach a little bit different. We're, we'll probably have to use things like cameras and things like that to help with the navigation. We're excited about what we're doing. The technology is pretty exciting, moving quickly. And you know, I just say that the farmers we're working with have been great to work with um, to help us out. We, we basically take all of our cues from farmers in terms of the direction we're going. So they, they've been great to work with.